Hi, it's Miss Vital. This podcast is on protists and it's meant for AP Biology. Advances in eukaryotic systematics have caused the classification of protists to change significantly. Protists constitute a paraphyletic group and protista is no longer a valid kingdom. Protists are eukaryotes, thus they have organelles and are more complex than prokaryotes. Most protists are unicellular, but there are some colonial and multicellular species. Protists are the most nutritionally diverse of all eukaryotes. They include photoheterotrophs, which contain chloroplasts, heterotrophs, which absorb organic molecules or ingest larger food particles, and mixotrophs, which combine photosynthesis and heterotrophic nutrition. There is now considerable evidence that much protist diversity had its origins in endosymbiosis. Mitochondria evolved by endosymbiosis of an aerobic prokaryote. Plastids evolved by endosymbiosis of a photosynthetic cyanobacterium. One hypothesis divides all eukaryotes into five supergroups. We're going to look at the first group of protists, the excavates, which include protists that have modified mitochondria and protists with unique flagella. The clad excavata is characterized by its cytoskeleton. Diplomonads have modified mitochondria called mitosomes. They derive energy anaerobically, for example, by glycolysis. They have two equal-sized nuclei and multiple flagella. And one of the famous parasites in this group causes giardia, which is an intestinal infection that is very common in the United States and be caught, can be caught by swimming in lakes and rivers. Parabasalids have reduced mitochondria called hydron hydronosomes that generate some energy anaerobically. This group includes Trichomonas vaginitis, which is a pathogen that causes yeast infections in human females. Euglenozoans are another group that are very diverse and they include predatory heterotrophs, photosynthetic autotrophs, and pathogenic parasites. The main feature distinguishing them as a clad is a spiral or crystalline rod of unknown function inside their flagella. This clad includes the kinetoplastids and euglenids. Clinetoplastids are famous for trypanosoma, which is a parasite that causes African sleeping sickness in humans. It is carried by the tsetse fly. Euglenids can be both autotrophic and heterotrophic, which is a pretty remarkable advanced adaptation for a single-celled protist. Chromalveolates may have originated by secondary endosymbiosis. This clad is controversial and includes the alveolates and the stromatophiles. Members of the clad alveolata have membrane-bound sacs just under the plasma membrane. This group includes the dinoflagellates, apicomplexians, and ciliates. Dinoflagellates have a diverse group of aquatic mixotrophs and heterotrophs, and there are dinoflagellate blooms that cause the toxic red tide. Apicomplexions are parasites of animals, and some can cause serious human disease specifically plasmodium, which is the parasite that causes malaria. Malaria is the most deadly infectious disease in the world. It kills millions of people every year, more than AIDS. Ciliates are a large varied group of protists and are named for their use of cilia to move and feed. The most famous cilia is the paramecium. Stromatopiles include several groups of heterotrophs as well as certain groups of algae. Most have a hairy flagellum paired with a smooth flagellum. Diatoms are unicellular algae with a unique two-part glass-like wall of hydrated silica. Diatoms are a major component of phytoplankton, and their fossilized walls compose much of the sediments known as diatomaceous earth, which is mined by people and used in abrasives and filters. Golden algae are named for their color. Most are unicellular, but some are colonial. Brown algae is the largest and most complex algae. They are all multicellular, and they are the common seaweeds. 
Giant seaweeds called kelp live in the deep parts of the ocean. The algal body is plant-like but lacks true root stems and leaves and instead is called a thallus. The root part is the holdfast. It does not absorb nutrients, but it just anchors the plant. The stem-like part is the stipe, and that in turn supports the leaf-like blades. A variety of life cycles have evolved among the multicellular algae, and this is called alternation of generations. The most complex life cycles include an alternation of multicellular haploid stages and multicellular diploid stages. Oomycetes includes water molds, white rusts, and downy mildew. They were once considered fungi, but based on morphological studies are now in the protist kingdom. Most Oomycetes are de decomposers or parasites. One of the famous that had a huge ecological impact is the Oomycetes that caused potato blight, which was the cause of the potato famine in Ireland, which killed millions of people and caused a mass exodus of millions of people. Many of them wound up immigrating to the United States. Rhizarians are a diverse group of protists and they're defined by their DNA similarities. This group includes forearms and radiolarians. Forearms are named for porous, generally multi-chambered shells called tests. Pseudopodia extend through the pores in the test and help to move them along. Radiolarians use their pseudopodia to engulf microorganisms through phagocytosis. Red algae and green algae are the closest relatives of land plants. Over a billion years ago, a heterotrophic protist acquired a cyanobacterial endosymbiont. The photosynthetic descendants of this ancient protist evolved into red algae and green algae. Land plants are descended from the green algae. Red algae are reddish in color due to an accessory pigment which masks the green of chlorophyll. Red algae can photosynthesize at deeper depths and they are the most abundant type of algae in the coastal waters of the tropics. Green algae are named for their grass green chloroplasts. Plants are descended from green algae. The two main groups are chlorophytes and caraphyceans. Unicons include protists that are closely related to fungi and animals. This supergroup, Uniconta, includes animal, fungi, and some protists. This group in two, includes two clads, the amoebozoans and the opithecons, which are animals, fungi, and related protists. Amoebozoans are amoeba that have lobe or tube shape rather than thread-like pseudopodia. They include gym amoebas, entamoebas, and slime molds. One of the famous amoebas, an entamoeba, are parasites and vertebrates, and the entamoeba histolica causes amoebic dysentery in humans, which is Montezuma's revenge, and that's the reason why you don't drink the water when you go to Mexico. Protists play a key role in ecological relationships. There are symbiotic protists that benefit their hosts. For example, dinoflagellates nourish coral polyps that build reeds. Hypermastigotes digest cellulose in the gut of termites. Some protists are parasitic, like the malaria that we've already mentioned, and photosynthetic protists in aquatic environments are the main producers in those environments, and because the planet is covered with 75% water, they produce more oxygen and absorb more CO2 than all of the plants on land.